the lines between reality and falsehood are easily blurred. But how well can you distinguish between the two? Today I will present the life accounts of five Star Wars characters, some of which are so obscurely fail to possess any images online, while the others are completely made up. So, which characters will have you second guessing, and which will trick you entirely? Raised on the planet Bofawee during the reign of the Galactic Empire, Talfa Kalip was a force adept with a knowledge of gaining power through social manoeuvring. Consequently, he refused to join the Rebel Alliance in the wake of the Galactic Civil War. However, when the Empire established a base on Bofawee and imposed martial law, Talfa reluctantly joined the Rebels. Kolob was assigned to serve aboard the transport Griffin's wings, which he used to scout the planet Yorgrax. Unfortunately, the transport was ambushed by three Imperial Guardian class light cruisers, forcing it to crash land on the world below. When Talva and the rest of his crew came to, they were approached by two Imperial scouts who were also stranded on Yorgrax. What followed was rather unexpected. Both sides threw away their imposed hatred for one another to achieve a mutual goal – survival. As a poet, Felix composed a poem on the Sith victory at the Battle of Mizra. He detailed how a vast number of Sith Lords plummeted from a sky thick with ash on speeders named after predatory animals which represented their distinctive personalities. The poem emphasised how the sheer roar from each vehicle drowned out the screams of those left dying on the battlefield. The account was so successful that it and Felix remained famous throughout the galaxy for over a millennium. Dyson Zatar met his partner Kaiji in the Rebel Alliance. However, as skilled as they were, both grew tired of their military lives. After leaving the rebellion, the two lovebirds vowed to rob an imperial bank on Coruscant. In the months that followed, Dyson and Kaiji meticulously planned how they would enter Imperial City, bypass the bank's guards, disable the alarm, and, most importantly, steal every single credit in sight. When the day came, as the two prepared to jump from their craft, Dyson began to doubt the heist. However, Kaiji reassured him that everything would go to plan. They skydived to a rooftop below, where Kaiji scouted six tough-looking bodyguards. But most were soon subdued by a cloak Dyson, while the rest followed a decoy of his partner. He then navigated to the bank's prized vault, as Kaiji stayed behind to hack the surveillance system. Unfortunately, as Dyson gazed upon the vault's massive door, he heard screams from his partner's comlink. The guards had reappeared, and they had backup. Kaiji ordered Dyson to leave her behind though, to take the credits and live a rewarding life. Very reluctantly, Dyson complied. Lei Nitos was a Jedi who lived around 3,000 years before the reign of the Galactic Empire. As a member of the Paloic species, Nitos perceived the Force as a harmony of musical tones emanating throughout the galaxy. As a result, Lei sought balance in the Force by discovering new worlds. While investigating the planet Jerilic, the space explorer felt a familiar musical sensation through the Force. Nitos perceived it to be an undiscovered location in the galaxy's deep core, and so ventured through hyperspace with the Force as a guide. The musical tones led Lei to the world of Typhon, along with the moons of Ashla and Bogan. Left abandoned for several centuries due to collapsed hyperlanes, the Traveller had rediscovered the ancient birthplace of the Jedi Order and its successor, the Jedi Order.
in her prime, Pedrovia ranked as one of the galaxy's greatest pod racers. While her opponents bashed and destroyed one another for supremacy, Pedrovia utilised speed and acceleration to cross the finishing line first. In fact, she'd often establish an early lead, leaving her fellow racers in the dust. Consequently, the Huts betted heavily upon a first place finish for Pedrovia in the Bunta Eve Classic of 1 BBY. The race itself began like most others, with Pedrovia establishing an early lead. She zipped around each tight corner, dodged the ever unwelcoming Tuscan Raiders and looked to be headed for another big win. Matters took a turn for the worse, however, on the final lap. As Pedrovia raced towards the finishing line, her pod's control panel lit up, indicating something was terribly wrong. She tried to ignore the flashing lights as much as she could, sensing that victory was only a fingertip away. Moments later, her craft cut out completely. Despite her best and frantic efforts, her pod was left inanimate as every other racer passed her by. Left in the dust herself, Pedrovia finished, by default, in last place. It was said that the Huts had a talk with her afterwards. It must have been a long one, as no one ever saw Pedrovia ever again. So, which characters do you rightfully believe to be real, and which have I completely made up? Let's begin with Talva Kolib, the Boffin Force Adept who joined the Rebel Alliance only to later find himself in league with Imperial Scouts. This story sounds too good to be true, right? Well, it's completely legitimate. In fact, the Unlikely Alliance later discovered a Sith fortress on Yorgrax, where they encountered the Sith Spirit Quarlock for Nay. Now, what about Felix the Poet? It seems plausible, right? That's because he did compose a poem on the Sith victory at the Battle of Mizra, which stayed relevant up until 36 ABY. Let's look at the third character, Dyson, who left his criminal partner and love interest behind to live a life of luxury. Is Dyson real? Not a chance. The story of Dyson and Kaiji was actually inspired by Kasumi and her partner from the Mass Effect universe. Moving on to Lei, the space explorer who discovered the ancient birthplace of the Jedi Order. If you thought this character was false, you'd be wrong. The story is 100% authentic. That leaves us with Petrovia, the champion pod racer, whose fate was seemingly sealed by a busted craft and very angry huts. It seems a bit far-fetched, doesn't it? It does bear no truth at all, to be fair. So, were you able to perceive the truth, or have lies fooled you? Let me know how you scored in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and for more Star Wars related content, keep a lock here. To the King's Ads. Capable of withstanding anything from blaster fire to the Death Star prototype super laser due to its quantum crystalline armour, the Sun Crusher could destroy entire star systems within a matter of hours. It done so by targeting stars with its primary weapon, a payload of 11 energy resonance torpedoes. When fired, the oval shaped plasma discharge was launched into a system sun at near light speed velocity. Upon impact, the torpedo burrowed into the star's core to release dense pockets of energy, rendering it unstable. 